Uh, we are talking about NFC, um, NFC near field communication, and about MIFAIR uh, ultralight system. Uh, NFC ultralight chips are used for communication, uh, near field communication, and in our country they have been used especially uh, for the transportation system like buses, metros, trams. And uh, in the past, uh, there has been some people who discovered some um, hack, uh, they hacked the system of the, of the communication between those chips. And so in 2008, the MIFAIR Classic, which is a, a type of um, an FC chip, um, they managed to exploit the MIFAIR Classic. While in 2011, two American guys managed to exploit an uh, FC ultralight one, which is the one I will be uh, speaking about. An FC ultralight. Uh, in my country, so in Italy, it has been used for a uh, transportation system. So uh, if you take a bus, you will take a ticket, a multiple ride ticket, uh, which has a chip and an FC. Mifer ultralight inside. And so, um, what is it? Um, RFID chip are designed to work at a target frequency, 13.56 uh, megahertz frequency. And there are a lot of kinds, as I told you before. And there is a MIFAR Classic, Ultralight, a lot of types. And the Ultralight is cheap, but it has a problem. It, is not, uh, it has no hardware encryption. So, um, how we came to this hack? Well, uh, we started uh, studying NFC uh, communication on NFC, NFC chips when from January uh, the local transportation system um, the law in Turin um, updated their stamping machines and so it was possible to use those tickets uh, to ride the bus or metro or what else. And we tried to exploit the same vulnerability uh, they discovered in 2011, the one I was uh, telling you something uh, before. But um, the point is that we didn't know anything about the structure of this ticket. And so we tried with that vulnerability, but we failed. And that was the point. We failed. Uh, we, we tried to. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, if you don't know what are you dealing with, it is, uh, let's say, it is tricky to, to, to solve it. So uh, we decided to study better um, uh, those uh, kind of technology. And so we decided. Uh, discovered that uh, we, we try to make some little experiments, uh, make uh, experience, and so we decided to uh, stamp uh, one ticket after the other and comparing the results, we had an NFC reader and uh, we, we read the dumps of those tickets. And we were comparing them to find if there were some uh, similarities, uh, something similar to compare it and to find, uh, for example, how was the data uh, saved on the ticket. And so uh, we managed to plot down some empiric results of this. But uh, this is the point where I was um, getting you. Um, um, assume that you know where exactly the time of the last stamp of your ticket is being stored. Now, if you have an NFC phone with an NFC reader and writer, you can actually uh, change the field where the uh, time of your last stamp is stored. And so that in this way, you can easily bypass the system of stamping, the stamping machine, and you can stamp uh, by yourself your ticket. And this is where we um, wanted to um, uh, where we wanted to, to get uh, the point uh, we were looking for. But the problem is that is, it is not so reliable that mm, that kind of thing. You have an NFC reader and a lot of things to deal with. So it was not the point. And um, if you want to add something about that, no. but, uh, the point is that we managed to solve our problem because when we looked uh, in more in, mm, in 
we paid more attention about how the ticket was made and we, um, let's say, um, we came to a solution uh, and we found that the answer to, to hack those tickets and, um, and find a way to make them um, unlimited was in the log bytes. The log bytes are a sector of the ticket and he will speak about that now. Okay. This is the ticket of, our, of my city, the um, five rights ticket. So you can stamp it uh, till five times and then it expires, theoretically. Uh, this is how it composed. We will look uh, at uh, log bytes and OTP data. Uh, okay, OTP is the only security fu function in the MIFA to light tickets. Uh, there are four bytes and uh, by default they are all set to zero. Um, when you stamp the ticket, uh, there is an uh, OR operation that turn one bit to one. And so you can turn it back to zero. So that's the only way you can stamp the ticket without uh, um, any fraud or something like that, theoretically. Um, so there is 36 uh, possible uh, rights on uh, each ticket. And um, uh, we've we'll speak about uh, later. The data sector <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh. It will be funny Wait. now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw one of your slides coming in. It's not going to be funny. Uh -oh. <laughs> we have decided to yeah. brand this uh, that you've heard of spot the fed. This is now shot the noob. <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> I trust him. <laughs> he is of legal drinking age in Italy. <laughs> and this stage is actually technically part of Italy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Audience, raise your hand if it's your first time at DEF CON. You, sir, get up here. <laughs> On stage. Somehow. Yeah, I can get on. I don't know if I'll be able to. <laughs> <laughs> There's steps on the other side. All right. <laughs> to all the new people at DEF CON. Cheers. 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 Who took my bag? Got the alcohol. It's right here. That's important. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where was I? I don't remember. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was strong. The, <laughs> the data sector was used in the past attack, the um, 2011 attack for store the rights, but this sector is uh, uh, readable and writable, so you can just uh, swipe it and get a free a new a new ticket. But uh, in uh, our they fix it, and so in Tarin doesn't work anymore. So we for um, about. Um, just decode the timestamp from the validator machine and reproduce it without touching the OTP sector. So the rides remain the same, but we can stamp it by ourselves. But uh, we are um, not uh, uh, get the point because we lack of NFC hardware. So we are we are poor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you want some dumps of our ticket, we will give you at the Q&A session. No problem. Okay, these are some empirical results. Uh, we can speak more later. Just um, doesn't matter. Okay, the lock sector. Uh, this is the most important part of our talk because uh, that's the point where we found the solution. Uh, there are two bytes. The first one is the red one and the second one is the orange. Okay. Uh, each, bi each bit of, our, of these bytes can lock a sector and make it read only. Okay. So um, we, what, uh, what we did is 
just lock the bit or in lock bit sector that uh, make read only the OTP data. So the machine try to validate it, but oops, it read only and I cannot. Uh, so uh, that's uh, we when we first made uh, our um, test on the road, we found a little problem because um, it's not good by that your five rights taken and then have uh, always five rights when they test it. We mm. forgot to took one of the right. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so it was. Nah, not good. <laughs> what are you going to say to the the, the man who is going to uh, check your ticket? Yeah, uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, how to fix it? The lock attack is quite easy to be fixed theoretically because you just need to check if the OTP bit is read only or not and if it's read only refuse to validate. But uh, the main problem is the time attack because uh, I yeah, um, the point is um, there are two vulnerabilities we found, but we exploited just one because we we lacked of time and of hardware, as he explained before. So the time uh, the time vulnerability would be uh, very easy to be exploited if we uh, can actually uh, decode the data. And uh, uh, what if, uh, imagine, if you have a, uh, if you know exactly how the data is encoded and where it is exactly uh, located inside your ticket, it will be really easy to exploit this because if you have a NFC reader writer, you can write the data each time you want. So you can pick your ticket, put on your NFC phone and just stamp the, uh, the actual data, so the actual time, uh, if it is 5.15, uh, uh, then the, you put your ticket in, uh, over your phone and then you can write 5.15 each time you want. And so you can bypass the um, validating uh, system and so uh, you can still have four rides left and you're just adjusting the, the time. And that will be uh, really hard uh, uh, to be fixed because the, uh, all the data written inside the ticket is not encrypted. Uh, hardware speaking, hardware speaking, and so uh, if you are able to decode this, it will be very hard to fix it. While the lock attack and so uh, the exploit um, he was speaking about will be easy to be fixed because if the stamp machine checks if the lock bit is on or off, and then he uh, with a feedback um, uh, way, uh, the stamp machine can immediately know if your ticket is fake or not. Uh, so uh, now we are going to study and uh, uh, study more about those kind of tickets and try to decode data and if you would like to help us, uh, well we are open minded and so uh, we will give you the dumps and uh, uh, any help will be very uh, accepted very well and that is the point. So um, we we also thought about a solution for the time attack, but it should require a firmware upgrade that um, theoretically the, um, enables the, encrypt the software encryption on the ticket. Because if you encrypt the ticket, uh, you can just uh, timestamp your ticket with your phone, but um, we spoke that uh, we spoke uh, of that uh, with uh, our transport company. They say, yeah, yeah, no, never did anything. We are still waiting that our vulnerability is fixed on subground. Um, we don't really know about that. Uh, and uh, okay, we are working about a um, tool that uh, should do it uh, in everything automatically. Uh, and actually it is written in Python and works on uh, Linux uh, computer. You need a... Uh, can you need a Yeah. You An FC reader. Okay. Of course. Just? Yeah. Okay. That is uh, the tool we used for decoding and writing the, the tickets. It is an NFC reader you can find everywhere. It is cheap, cheap for ten dollars on eBay or uh, something like that and get free rides for your life. So <laughs> we start we, we start selling these if you want at the door after the talk. Okay.
No. Okay, and we also wanted to buy um, Proxmark for further study, but we really lack of money, so we are also open to donation. <laughs> B we accept Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. And so, um, I think that's it. Uh, if you have questions about uh, how we get into it, but I think, uh, well, I don't know if you got the, the meaning of what we were speaking about. Uh, you know, it is a little bit difficult to uh, speak in a, another language when you are outside and, well, but we tried and I think it has, uh, it has been a, a very good experience. I, I think, I hope you enjoyed this talk and I hope, uh, well, you got the clue. Uh, for us it was a very big, um, um, not surprise, but we were very happy to, to find and something like that and uh, to have been accepted here um, to explain you what we found and, uh, and uh, if you want to test the vulnerability on your city we are glad to <laughs> receive feedback and also invitation for lunch dinner <laughs> a coffee <laughs> everything I think that uh, speaking about uh, things more in details wouldn't be so appreciated by you. I, I don't know if you will appreciate to speak about the very detail of uh, those tickets. But if, if you want, in the Q&A, you can ask us Anything. for uh, further inf information and details about those tickets. So, uh, I don't know. Um, do you have any questions? <coughs> or... How do you find out what technology your, your mass transit system was using for its RFID system? Yeah. Um, they advertising on their website. <laughs> uh, Google. Yeah. That was convenient. Uh, so uh, they, there's a similar system that's in use in the Bay Area um, and so I'm, I'm especially interested in what you were talking about with the timestamp. Uh, because uh, the, the San Francisco uh, system, the way it works is you, you swipe to get on the bus the first time and you have 90 minutes to yeah, be able like, to do like in Turin. Okay, so, so you have the same system there. So it just amounts to changing the timestamp on that and, and you change it to now and you get 90 minutes from now to be able to ride and you can do that. That's your free, uh, free for life system. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, there's the um, work in progress because, uh, just a second, okay, uh. Uh, if you see, we are um, just uh, guessing where the real timestamp is stored because uh, we didn't have an MVC phone, so going on the tram with a computer, uh, five tickets and uh, an MVC, these, it's not so good. <laughs> But There's nothing suspicious about that at all. It happens all the time. In, in, in San Francisco, anyway, you see that stuff all the time. Uh, okay. So, if you have an um, oh, invitation for San Francisco. <laughs> Love to have you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Another one? Another question? Yep. Yeah. Is this research... Are you going to get arrested when you go back? <laughs> no, uh, no, wait. Uh, we, we sent a mail to the, to the company explaining that we found this vulnerability. Yesterday. Uh, <laughs> they, they are not geeks, so they can't uh, reply very fast. And so we are waiting yeah. now uh, for a reply. And no, what? we... <laughs> We are publishing a white paper about that and we send uh, it to, they, to them, but uh, I hope they won't fix on the subground because I take subground very often. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if you want to read our white paper, it will be available. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we will share with you. And also the, the tool. Paper. Yeah, and the tool. It's yeah. very bad written, but works. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Anyone question? else? No invitation? <laughs> <laughs>